one of King's first trips to Canada, August 7, 1956. One year after the Montgomery bus boycott, King visited Windsor, Ontario and spoke at the Emancipation Day celebration. King was supposed to visit Canada again for a vacation to New Brunswick with friend Harold DeWolf. But letters discovered in the National Archive reveal the owner of a chalet told King and his wife, Coretta Scott King, they were not welcome. The letter read, quote, A great many are from the New England states, as well as those from further south. For this reason, we feel it would be better not to accommodate your friends. It would be more than a decade later, just about one year before his death, that King made one final visit to Canada to participate in CBC Massey Lectures. It is a deep personal privilege to address a nationwide Canadian audience. But perhaps one of the biggest Canadian connections was after King's assassination. His killer, James Earl Ray, fled to Canada immediately after shooting King on April 4, 1968. Ray would end up in Toronto using aliases to disguise his identity. One of the places Ray stayed was here at 102 Ossington Avenue. It's now home to Tanny Lloyd Smith, and she discovered the historical significance just a few months ago. And then I came across this very tiny like byline that said something about um, Martin Luther King, assassination, 102, Ossington, and, and of course I was like, what? So I clicked on it, and that's when I learned that um, the gentleman that assassinated Martin Luther King resided here, and I was shocked that nobody seems to know that. Ray would eventually leave Toronto on a fraudulent passport. And two months after King's death, Ray was arrested at London's Heathrow Airport. He eventually pled guilty to murdering King and was sentenced to 99 years in prison.